It's been five years. Five years since I relocated to Switzerland in 2019, and there were so many things that I wished I've known earlier, or people had just given me the advice, so that we have made my relocation journey a lot smoother. So in this video, I will be sharing with you my personal experience and 10 things I wish I knew about Switzerland before moving, and I hope that this would help those of you that are planning to move to Switzerland sometime soon. If you're new here, my name is Olivia, and I share everything related to Swiss travels and life in Switzerland. So if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, do consider consider hitting the subscribe button below and also turn the notifications bell on so that you will always be alerted to new videos. Without further ado, let's get going. The first tip I have is related to your mindset and that is not to settle. What I mean by that was related a lot to our apartment search. We were lucky to have a relocation agent back then who was responsible for helping us to scout for apartments um, in Switzerland because we were still physically in Singapore back then and it was not possible to, to search for the apartments by ourselves. Ideally, we wanted to stay somewhere which is where we are currently at. This will be my most ideal place because of the location, proximity to the lake and it's just a really charming neighborhood. But we ended up with an apartment in the suburbs of Lausanne. It was like our f the first apartment that we got and I remember the mindset I had back then was like, oh my gosh, like we better just take what we have already. You know that the competition here is so fierce and uh, it's really difficult to find uh, an, uh, an apartment and if you don't take it, you know, we don't know when when is going to be our next apartment that we can get. I was running on this like scarcity mindset, like kiasu mindset again, like very Singaporean uh, because I was worried that you know what's going to happen to us if we arrive in Switzerland without an apartment? Where are we going to stay? What's going to happen to all our shipment that is already coming? It's not that we I don't enjoy the place that I stayed previously in, in Lausanne, but I felt that on hindsight, it would have been better if I had a broader mindset into thinking that, you know, hey, it's not the end of the world if you arrive without an apartment because there were alternatives that I didn't consider, uh, such as maybe renting a temporary place for a while, like at Airbnb, while being physically present in Switzerland so that you can physically go and check the apartments for yourself. Because there's a lot of difference between just looking um, at the photos or the videos that your relocation agent is going to send you versus you being in the place and, you know, checking out the vibe of the, 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 the whole neighborhood, the amenities and looking at the, the apartment itself. So yeah, I mean, things turned panned out well for me in the end, but I felt that if I had adopted a broader mindset, who knows, maybe I would have ended up in where I am today at this uh, this neighborhood way in advance, five years earlier than, than moving to Lausanne at that point in time. The second tip I have is to consider secondhand furniture. There's no need for you to ship your entire wool over from wherever you are to Switzerland. And that was how I operated five years ago. I was so afraid that, you know, things are going to be so expensive here. It's going to be so hard to, to get nice stuff. And it's better for us to just like bring everything that we have. So I think we ship over like our bed frame, all our kitchenware, you know, like is there's so many secondhand goods and furniture being sold online at a very cheap price that you would not believe it. Some people even just give it up for free because there's a lot of expats that are living in, in this area, like in Geneva, in Lausanne and they're constantly like moving out and they want to clear their furniture so they, they they really like put for a very low price and you just go and collect and also I feel that it's also a nice beginning for yourself like you know you don't have to bring over like your baggage from your previous place you can start afresh and you can also have fun with redesigning your space it also signifies a new chapter for yourself the third advice is to focus on the bureaucracy first. Within your first month of settling, there's going to be so many things that you need to get done, starting from your permit, getting the biometrics done, setting up your health insurance and your bank account, you know, finding your family doctor, all these things have to be done. And I feel that it's important that in your first month, you just focus on, you know, having a checklist of all these things that you, you need to do. Don't be so quick to uh, go and travel because all this can be done later on. You know, Switzerland is just there for you to enjoy for the rest of your time here. Focus on getting the, the necessary things done right so that you don't have to stress over it or come back to deal with it uh, in the later stage of your moving. The best things of Singaporean in terms of uh, driving license is that you can convert it immediately and you get an international driving license. That's an advantage that not a lot of countries have because I know that for certain countries like you have to take like the theory exams or is it the 
the, the physical exams. I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm so glad that I didn't need to. I took my driving um, license back like 10 years ago when I was 18 years old and I just have to like reapply and re reconvert it to my international license and that saved so much time and hassle. My fourth tip about moving to Switzerland is that how well you're going to adapt will very much depend on how well you learn the language. Switzerland is a country where English is not that widely spoken as compared to places like maybe, I don't know, Canada, UK, Singapore, where English is like the the def default language, but it's not the case in Switzerland. Um, based on which canton that you settle in, maybe you're in the German side or you're at the French side or the Italian side in Ticino, you have to speak the local language. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult for you for even for your very basic everyday tasks, maybe going to the supermarket, visiting the postman. Whenever we receive administrative letters, I will be so stressed because every single document came in French. There was no English uh, translation to it. And I had to use like my Google Translate to like scan the document and know what the hell is talking about. And also when you're like making phone calls, be it like to the internet service providers or you want to make like an appointment with the doctors, most of the time they're speaking French or German if you're in, in Zurich or, or Luzern. So it's really important that you can speak like everyday phrases. The best investment I made during my first three months in Switzerland is to take intensive French classes. Every single day, I was at Leco Migro taking classes for three hours, come back, do my homework, and the next day I went back and study again. My proficiency in French just skyrocketed within that three months. And I honestly think that if you're someone that just arrived in Switzerland, maybe you're still looking for a job, the best thing you can do for yourself is to sign up for an intensive class because the teacher is quite strict as well. You know, they're not going to speak English to you during your class. You are 100% only speaking French. And when you're immersed in the environment, you know, in that very fast environment where every day you are like absorbing new vocabulary, new language, and also you are dealing with all your administrative and your everyday tasks, you are going to learn and improve so fast in your French. So... 100% I felt that that was the most worthwhile thing I've done. But if I were to push myself even further, like even before coming to Switzerland, I think looking back, another thing I would have done is to take online classes in French. Back then, I was actually taking physical classes at L'Alliance Française. Everyone has different experience with them. Personally, for me, I felt that I didn't learn as fast as I could have because it's a group setting, right? So, and also people come after work. I take my classes like two times a week after work. It's like, it starts about like eight o'clock and people are already tired. So the, the pace of the class was very slow. I felt like I took the class for two months and the amount of things I learned, I was probably like what I learned in the first three lessons of my Migro lessons. So didn't felt that like it was worth the time. But if I have taken online classes with uh, with a, a language provider, which I'm with Lingoda right now, the course materials are excellent and you can choose between private class and group classes. And if I really want to invest, I would have gone straight on with a private tutor online and it's still cheaper than getting a private tutor you know, in a physical uh, environment. It's cheaper and the teacher is going to be paced with your learning speed. And I'm, I was confident that I could have learned a lot faster. It's just that at that point, I wasn't aware of like online classes back then. If you're interested in trying out Lingoda, there is a seven day trial where you can try out three group classes or one private class. And if you subscribe during the first month, you can use my code OLLICHINI for 20% off your first month. Next tip is to be patient with the job search. I previously done a very detailed video on my job hunting experience in Switzerland. So if you need more tips on that, check out my video here. But in general, I have a few tips right now for you. If you're sending out like hundreds of applications and all you get are rejection letters, there's probably a few things that you need to take note of. Firstly, maybe your cover letter and your CV is not targeted. Probably you're just like mass spamming your application everywhere and chances are it's going to get rejected because your CV is going to be filtered out by those uh, robots and if it's not targeted enough, you are not even going to clear the first tier of the, of the clearance. So I think you should consider targeting your resume and your cover letter very specific to the company's needs. Uh, check out the keywords that they're using and make sure that your cover letter and your CV really have, have, have those uh, information. Second thing is I feel that in terms of the job markets in Switzerland, a lot of the jobs are hidden and 
the faster way for you to get jobs is really to network, to really go out and connect with people, you know, whether is it uh, meeting people uh, over coffee or attending network networking events. These are the best way for you to make the right connections for people to know what you're doing here uh, and also understand a little bit more about your professional background. And then hopefully you get a referral or, or, or a chat can lead you somewhere because that was exactly what I did and how it landed my second job in Switzerland. Yeah. If you're thinking of traveling around Switzerland, I'm happy to share that I've just launched my brand new Swiss travel guide. In it comes along 200 over destinations where you can explore via interactive map. And I've also included all of my personal tips and recommendations inside the guide. You can get full access to the guide, which includes access to all of my itineraries, or you can purchase it as a single itinerary option. Use my code OLLICHINI for a 20% off, and I hope that you enjoy this guide. Next tip I have is to get all of your medical checks and your dent your dentist appointments done before coming. So as you already know, things are like three times more expensive here as compared to your home country. So it's really best to just do like a full body checkup, get everything done before coming. So you save the cost of um, doing it here in Switzerland. And also over the counter medicines, it's quite difficult to, to get them. Like you either need a prescription or sometimes you can get it here, yes, but it's also expensive. And what I usually do is like whenever I'm back in Singapore, I'm just going to get all of my cough medicine, my flu meds, uh, meds for stomach ache and everything so that, you know, I don't have to like get an appointment with my doctor for all this kind of like everyday uh, common colds. The next advice I would give is that your lifestyle in Switzerland would very much depend on the canton that you're in because each region really have a very distinct, unique way of life. For me, I am living in the French side of Switzerland in Swiss Homo and I feel like the lifestyle here is... You know, maybe the, the people living in Swiss German side, they will kind of say like, ah, oh, the people here are like very, um, very disorganized, especially when it comes to Geneva. And, uh, like the train is breaking down at a higher frequency as compared to the Swiss German side. I don't know why, especially the Lausanne to Geneva track. It's always like late or like there's train breakdown. I personally prefer the life here in Swiss Homo. I feel that it's more relaxed, um, and it's also by the lake and, they just have a very lazy, fair way of doing things. Whereas when I spoke to friends that are living in a Swiss German side, I, I guess the common feedback that I receive is that things are a little bit stricter there. Like there's a lot more rules there. I didn't leave there in, uh, at all to kind of experience the difference. But I do have this sense that Swiss Germans are a little bit more uptight. I think another second disadvantage is that if you are living in, in the Swiss German part, even if you speak high German, sometimes it's still difficult for you to really converse with the local because they have their own dialect. They speak in Swiss German. So you also cannot really understand them. Whereas in Swiss Homo, like if you speak French, everybody speaks French here. So you can like understand and you can make a good conversation with them. Of course, salaries are higher at the Swiss, uh, Swiss German side and in the Southern side in Ticino, um, of course, incomes are lower there, but you get a completely different vibe. There's more, it's more like Italian style, it's more Mediterranean, it's super charming in the summer. I really like Ticino uh, when it comes to like holidaying in Switzerland. Please check out my Ticino guide here. Um, and yeah, so overall, I think depending on where you stay in Switzerland, you will have a completely different experience. And when you cross over to the, to the other side, like to the other region, you'll feel like, wow, it feels like two, is this, is this still Switzerland? It feels like two different places. So yeah, make a good choice before coming, like know what is the lifestyle and what is the, what is the way of life, the, how people, how people behave, uh, in this, in this region that you're about to settle in. Another thing I wish I knew earlier is that public holidays in Switzerland differs across the cantons. So, you know, you have like your national holidays in, in Singapore and no matter where you are, I mean, we are just one country, right? Everybody has the same holidays, but it's not a case in Switzerland. So it depends on whether the canton is like a Catholic canton or it's like a Protestant canton, uh, probably related to the culture and the history of, of the canton. So here in Vo, like we have some certain holidays that is not celebrated in other cantons, like in the Swiss German. I think like it's called the Jeune Federal in September. That's probably something unique to, to Vaux. And then like in the German cantons, they have also holidays for like the Fasnacht, the, the German carnival. Uh, and if, in terms of cantons with the most number of holidays, public holidays, there's got to be Ticino. But all of your standard holidays, like your Swiss National Day, uh, Christmas, all this is still, is still like common across. La. In, so if you were to live in a certain 
Canton, like say you live in Zurich, but you work in, I don't know, somewhere in the French side, you will always abide by the, the, the holidays where your working place is at. So my husband who works in Zurich follows the German holidays and me who works in Swiss Homo, I follow the French holidays. Something good to know. Next advice I have is to get prepared to cook more often than back home. Um, by now, you already know. I think I, f I feel like I've been repeating this over and over again that really cost of living here is really very high and it's not going to be how it was back then in Singapore when I can just tap out food back. I just eat, um, you know, after work when you're tired, you just get food from the hawker center. But there's no such thing as hawker centers here. Like what you have is probably like maybe you get your takeaway from Migro and it's still expensive, you know, and it's not sustainable for you to be eating out every single day at restaurants. So definitely ever since moving here, we have been cooking a lot lot more often as compared to Singapore because why would I do that in Singapore like I have my parents who will be always uh, cooking for me I have my hawker centers and it's in fact co uh, eating out in Singapore is probably cheap, cheaper than cooking back ho cooking at home but it's the reverse case in in Switzerland so we have been trying out different services like we did uh, order um, meal delivery services, which was more of like a time saver. It's, it's still expensive, but for the quality of the food you get and also the amount of time you save, uh, we felt that it was a feasible option for us for a period of time. But other times we were basically just meal prepping for like maybe on Sundays, we cook a big meal and then we will eat for the next two days for our lunch. If you have not started cooking in wherever you're from, maybe it's time to pick up a few simple recipes so that you can sustain yourself in Switzerland and there are certain meals that you can prepare for yourself without going to the restaurants. The last point I would like to talk about is about friendships, which took me a while to, to come to this realization that um, I cannot expect my friendships to remain the same as it was back in back in Singapore. I used to have very close friends and these are girl friends that I would hang out with very often. I would meet up with them uh, after work or we'll just go out and I, I was constantly aware of things that are going on in their lives but it completely changed ever since I moved. Sometimes I feel a bit sad that I'm not there for a lot of my friends when it comes to important milestones in their lives. I have missed out on so much um, birthdays, weddings, births. Uh, and I, so I always have this guilty feeling that I'm like the absent friend. And at the same time, sometimes I also have this like resentment, you know, like why is it that I constantly have to be the one reaching out to my friends? Um, and why is it not vice versa? Even when, you know, when you send a message like, how are you? I think that's the hardest message to, to respond to because how are you going to condense everything that has happened to you uh, in a single message, in a single response? For any relationships, whether marriage or friendships, it always takes two hands to clap. And I feel that especially to maintain a long distance friendship, it really involves two parties making the effort to check in on each other and, you know, just... Um, be there and maybe share, maybe just catch up over phone calls or messages. Of course, it's not going to be the same as meeting in person. But that's why whenever I return back to Singapore, I really try my best to be present for my friends and really spend quality time with them because I know that this is the only time I have in a single year with them. Of course, there are certain friends that I have said goodbye to or they are no longer in my life. And at times you may feel sad about it, but I feel that this is part and parcel of growing up, of moving abroad, that certain people may be in your life for a certain season in your life and they may leave and they're here to teach you a lesson. And at the same time, I have new friends that I've met here in Switzerland and I'm really grateful for them as well. So yeah, I think it's a give and take. Some people leave your life and some enter and they, they all make footprints in your path. And that's the end of my video. I think you should feel really proud of yourself for making this first step to relocate, to move somewhere outside your comfort zone. Everyone has their own different process and of course the road ahead is going to be pretty uncertain. It's going to be quite scary at times but it's going to be a worthwhile and a very exciting journey and who knows maybe five years later you'll be the one making these videos for other people coming to Switzerland so with that thanks for watching this video and I will see you in my next one bye